one of the plagues of the United States right now is like, you know, mass shootings. It's I mean, like, you got to realize it's, it's the same delusion I think these trolls uh, have. They're, you know. they're so... Wait, hold on. Wait, did you, did you just compare the trolls to mass shooters? Yes, he did. Yeah, well, yeah, they've apparently, because, both of these guys, yeah. every, well, okay, everything so, that happens, uh, they can somehow... All right, let, let, me, tie, let me tie it in for you. Whatever. AI is a scary thing to me because like... Wings is afraid of AI trolls. That's I was about to say, Wings afraid, will but, never yeah. be out of a job because AI can't quit a podcast twice in uh, two weeks. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, do you remember when the incel subreddit was big on Reddit? Th there's this thing that happens where like people live their whole lives in like this constant cloud of negativity of like yeah. my life sucks and i can't do anything about it and then it's wings other people. <laughs> <laughs> well hold on I mean, but tommy that's an unfair statement we're doing something about it we're actually making a show <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the lol cow podcast hello everybody welcome to lol cow live i'm here with boogie 2988 mr wings of redemption yes he hasn't quit just yet and Mr. Wendigoon, uh, super, super hot. I don't know what kind of YouTuber we called you. A, a, a paranormal, a crime YouTuber? We're, we're, a, a weird guy. Where do you put a strange person. Just a weird guy? Yeah, just a weird guy. Yeah, the people watch for some reason. But no, th thank you all so much for having me on the show. I mentioned it before we started, but all three of you are people who I've like almost interacted with or like had conversations with throughout the years. So it's cool to finally like sit down and talk. I appreciate the invite. Thank you very much. Thank you. And we actually, uh, you're doing us the honor. Yeah, I'm so, so glad you're here. I have so many questions for you, by the way. Start us off, Wings. Well, let's tell the chat. Like, where, how did, what video did you make that really kicked your channel off? I had, so I started in earnest. I, I had the channel since 2019, but I really started around Halloween of 2020. That's when I was like, I want to, you know, make YouTube videos. And for a while, I was getting, like, I was getting decent views, you know, a few thousand, 10,000 every now and then. Uh, but the one that really blew it up was the disturbing movie Iceberg. It was a video that was like a, an analysis of a bunch of like gory shock films. Uh, it got down to like snuff films near the end of it, stuff like that. Uh, that's cool. the one that that's one. <laughs> yeah, that's what I said. Yeah, like ooh, people die. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, and it kind of set the precedent for me talking about like really, like I. I I'm not saying this to like boast myself up, but I've had people say one of the reasons they like the channel is that I talk about really, really heavy topics, but I try to make it as lighthearted as possible while still being respectful. So the disturbing movie iceberg kind of set the tone for that moving forward. Uh, but yeah, that was the one that really had the kickoff. So let me ask you this question with that, when that video came out, I had a boxing match recently and I know uh -huh. people are tired of hearing about it, but after that boxing match, I had all this like, equity and like goodwill mm -hmm. and i had no clue what to do with it did you find yourself in that position like after that video popped mm. off you're like oh, okay i got all these viewers now where do i go with this channel or did you just keep going business as normal all right so that's a good point uh as soon as that happened and this was kind of what i had in mind as i was making youtube videos i had the idea if something catches then I need to double down right drop whatever I'm doing focus on that so as soon I I'd like I want to say, no, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, that wasn't my first Iceberg video. I was already working on Conspiracy Theory Iceberg series at that time. But as soon as that video took off, I actually had a few Icebergs before. The, the, that's It was the first one that got big. As soon as that one got big, I was like, okay, double down. So I started doing other standalone Iceberg videos. I started doing more disturbing content. I was like, since I have an audience that's kind of catered to this, I'm going to start branching out. So but the way I strategized is I did several iceberg videos. People stuck around for those. And then I would do a non-iceberg video and then back to an iceberg video, then a non, then back to it. And eventually I got to the point where I would space an iceberg out like every, I guess, three uploads. And by that point, people were sticking around for me. Yeah. And then I could kind of go in whatever direction I wanted. So pretty much I, even if it wasn't necessarily what I really wanted to do at the time, I stuck with what people were watching me for and then tapered off into other stuff. That's YouTube 101. Find out what works and then like slowly seed in. I don't know. We used to say back in the day, you want the content that grabs new viewers and then content that pleases your existing viewers. And you want to spread the two out, right? Yeah. You know, yeah. looking at your channel, I think I've scrolled all the way back to about three years ago. It looks like one of the first videos you did that blew up was uh, the mystery of the stairs in the woods. 
the true yeah. horror of local 58 did you delete a, a video a bunch of videos before this or is this like really no, original I, uploads? That, so the first upload i have <clears throat> is the gun tuber tier list there was one upload before that so like i made this channel in 2019 just as something to like hold videos on. There was one yeah. video I had privated before then that was just me and my friends like shooting a rifle a few times, just like us goofing off. Um, Woo -wee. Yeah. So yeah. <laughs> I'm out of plates in this group. Yeah, I'm a I'm a Tennessee boy, so you know it it shows. Uh, I, I, I I I hang out with these hillbillies all the time, so I'm I'm getting used to you people. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you 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 you're starting to feel the vibe, like the you, you yeah. start to look at your cousin told, a little I, differently every I now. I told you, Tommy, I'm not a hillbilly. <laughs> yeah. I live on flat land. I live yeah. on a paved road. Yeah, by God, I'm a redneck, not a hillbilly. Oh, sorry. Same thing. No, I'm not into redneck. Rednecks like farmers and shit. Yeah, I'm just a bumpkin. I'm just a country bumpkin. That's all. So here's here's my big question for you, okay? So I have uh, seen quite a few of your videos in my algorithm because I get into this creepy stuff. Um, and I, I guess I have two parts. Number one, how is this for your mental health researching this? Like, <laughs> uh, you know, I'm seeing Unabomber and all this boogies. other stuff. Like, <laughs> Well, that, but that, that's, a, that's a fair question. That's a fair when you're question, looking at like this cops. true crime stuff, when you're looking at, because I'll okay, all right. Story about me. Um, I listened to a podcast called Haunted or something like that. I, my very first time listening to true crime, it got recommended as a comedy podcast. And there's this <laughs> true crime about an axe murderer who killed a, a family, and then next to the body of the children, they found bacon grease because they presumed he was using it as lubricant. And I'm like, I listen to this video. And I'm like, well, I'm never listening to true crime again. This is, I hate everything about this. That, uh, that's how, a very, very comedy podcast for sure. <laughs> very comedic, yeah. Right. yeah. But like, like how, that's got to bother you, doesn't it? Like looking into the darkest parts of the internet, darkest parts of humanity at this point. Yeah, yeah I mean, it depends on the topic. There's been a few times that I've like, uh, I guess, researched for a video for a while and needed to take a break because it's just, it's a lot. Like right now I'm reading about uh, my next video plans change but my current plan is the next video is going to be about jonestown so i'm reading a lot about like what he did to a lot of the women and like kids at the compound and it's it's a lot uh, i don't know I think... anything about that but i heard the kool-aid was good yeah. <laughs> yeah, i heard it was to die for um yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah like i'm reading about that and it, it's a lot some there's been a few videos that i've just like totally dropped for a while then come back to like uh i did a video about unit 731 i think it was it's like half a year ago that's, at this point. that's the japanese people right yes the, the, yeah the people behind the sun yeah that's some yep. up shit right there yeah so i i actually wanted to make that video like over a year ago and i did all the research and i sat down to record it and i i literally turned on the camera and sat in front of it and was like i can't I can't do this video did right you, now. Did you did you watch the movie? Yeah, yeah, I'd seen the movie. Funny enough, actually, in the disturbing movie Iceberg, I'd watched it then. Uh, but like, what really got me was reading about like the actual reports of like the women and stuff, what they went through and everything. And it was it you was know heavy. What the most the thing in in that thing like for people don't know, seven thirty one was um, a Japanese military base that would take people from Manchuria and China and they would take them on rail carts to this secret base and they would do experiments on the human body with these people to try to further research into helping their soldiers be better acclimated for like winter, things like that. And to try to figure out how much some of the game, for example, they'll put a person in a pressure chamber and they'll keep turning the pressure up until things happen. Note what happens and they'll just keep doing it until the person dies and they'll do it multiple times to try to see if the results are the same the, you know the eyes pop first whatever it is mm -hmm. and like one of the most fucked up tests i think they did was like they would take a person and they would lather this cream on their arms and then they would dip their arms in water and then put them in a freezing cold uh freezer until their arms was coated with ice and then they would take their arms and dip it right into boiling water mm -hmm. and it's like wow it's like the funny thing about this is I use Unit 731 as like a... And you bitch about being on our podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I use this as a linchpin that karma doesn't exist because like a lot of people in Unit 731 actually live, lived in America and died in their beds because the United States government paid for the secrets that they learned through these testings. Yeah, they pay. It was similar to Operation Paperclip. That's where we paid off all like the German scientists after the war to help us with the rocket program. 
uh, the similar things happened with like a lot of the human research that was conducted in Japan. Um, yeah, yeah, it's tragic. It sucks. Uh, so like I'll read about stuff like that. I need to take a break. Uh, I, I took a year break to make that video because I, I wanted to readdress it and not just cover it for sensationalism because at the time I originally was going to make the video I was doing it because like oh this is something disturbing this is something that's gross I bet it'll get views and I, di I didn't want to do that so then when I readdressed it a year later I was looking at it from more of a historical standpoint how could we let this happen how did this happen historically and I felt better about it but to answer your question Boogie a lot of the times I need to take breaks um, I'd say overall, like I, I try to separate what I read about from like, you know, spending time with my wife, my social yeah. life, stuff like that. Just, just keep, you know, work it, work and family separate, so to speak. Um, but yeah, it, it can be a lot depending on the topic, especially when there's like, you know, images and videos attached, it can be heavy, but I mean, I'm still here. I mean, I made it this far. Right. Yeah. 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 Just, I'm how many like, subs I, you got now? Uh, I think it's 3.4. I'm looking thousand. at it right now. 3.4 thousand. Yeah, 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 yeah. A hundred. <laughs> but but uh, the reason I was asking that is like, do you ever think about maybe hiring other people like editors and like researchers and things to help streamline the process? I've thought about it. Uh, I've got one editor. Her name's Caitlin. Uh, if you're watching this, love you, Caitlin. I'll never say that to her face. Uh, but she is great at helping me she's also been a friend of mine i've known since high school so it was natural like i started doing youtube she edited so we started working together she edits about half my videos i'd say she also edits the podcast i have with meat canyon creepcast so like she helps me out with all that but as far as like the research writing side of it goes to me that's the fun part that's the part that like mm -hmm. I, i'll sit down and i'll read i'll go through these articles and police reports for days and i'll connect dots and stuff like that's that's what keeps me going so i'm kind of hesitant to hire people over there just because i enjoy it uh could i put out more I, content if i did probably but i i was gonna tell you i just got back from scotland and i, I visited mm -hmm. count dankula and i was in his um really fancy schmancy workshop and uh i i imagine i don't i don't think he's completely removed from from research but Boy, it's a it's a big load off. You can sit around and off and drink beer and play D and D all day yeah, if you have a team. Yeah. It's it's quite nice. It, it looked well, like I, a good time in there. Well, the reason I was bringing it up, Tommy, because of, of Blair um, Illuminati, like she kind of oh, she kind of went yes. down this she kind of went down the same uh, route, different content, but like still like the same kind of thing. Like she did more like companies and businesses and yeah. MLMs. Both and stuff video like that. essays. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, video essays. And I was like, I was like, at what point where do you where's the paths diverge where you, you go into Illuminati category and then you go into like Wendy Goon category? Is that just basically like a morally out of the person? Illuminati would have Illuminati would have jumped on like baby sacrifice if you thought it got enough views. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't yeah, I don't yeah. get the feeling our friend Wendigoon is he's actually quite interested in these topics, I when Illuminati would have done anything. <laughs> you know? and, I was, and also, I was, I was also thinking about like AI stuff. Like my wife watches like true crime stuff all the time, and like mm. most of the videos she watches, one hundred percent computer generated, mm. and she doesn't realize it. You know, like they use the computer generated right, voice, the topics, the things of that nature. Do you feel like that's something that's going to affect your your long term curve? I think that it will affect not to be mean to them, but like more fair weather listener, not to, of course, not to be mean to your wife or anything like that. Uh, but just right. like people who kind of passively listen to true crime, which nothing wrong with, I do that all the time. People who just want to hear the story. I think it'll affect that. But I also think there's always a market for people who want a personality, right? Like someone yeah, yeah, who's yeah. going to talk to them, like they're interested. You, someone they have like this, I guess, parasocial connection with. I think yeah, and you do that, that. You do that really well in your videos. Your videos are very much you presenting the content, not just the content. So I, well, they, I actually, yeah. I disagree with you. I think um, those terrible videos are, if, if you're never going to hook the, the passive fan, you're, but you might, they're actually probably good advertisements for for channels like you because if you want to learn more um you're going to go to somebody with the with the personality and has more detailed information I mean, and I, doesn't sound like a robot i mean i'll say um, these ai generated videos are starting to get really good because god they're so bad i can pick them out like i i, I, I yeah, you can, I you know, can realize they're, they're ai generated but they're they're getting really detailed I, yeah. I think well, they might get detailed, but there's always something wrong and there's always something out of place, some language that's right. out of place. And that's what I was about to say. There's like a, three minutes into a video that we were watching, I realized it was AI generated. Uh, at least the voice was because they mispronounced a word very horribly. And if it wasn't for that, I would have I would have tolerated it just like any other video essay. 
I, well, what I'm saying is, if you really, if you're going to get into, it, look, the, one of those videos, ten minutes tops. Yeah, he, this guy makes entire iceberg videos. So uh, I mean, like, you're never going to get like from an, an AI generated essay what you're going to get in the detail that you're going to get from Wendigo. I mean, yeah. I, I think it's actually long run. It helps you unless it becomes so good, and then we all have a problem for a lot of different reasons. Yeah, you know? I, I mean, it will eventually get there, right? You know, but I I think at the current moment it's it's a like what you're saying tommy it's not anything to worry about you know it's kind of mm. just like it more so just catches people who are vaguely interested in something yes. relatively and you're not getting that person anyway which is exactly my point. yeah you never yeah. get that big that guy that. wasn't going to click yeah. on a five-hour true crime video you know um but give it another few years because like think about it a year and a half ago AI was like these vague images of like looping colors and stuff. It kind of looked like a, you know, like an oil painting almost. Yep. And now it's like, you have to look at the hands to make sure it's AI, you know, like it's, it is getting mm. better quickly. I wonder what sure. it'll be in a couple of years, but yeah, right now I don't think it's anything. It, uh, AI is a scary thing to me because like, I forgot what story it was. Everything I scares a... you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but, but let me put this thought out there, right? AI has come how far in a year and a half? It went from a stream of colors to like being able to replicate art to the point that like Burger King and McDonald's is using AI generated yeah, yeah. art in their advertisement. The thing is, is like how long does it take a calculator to do a complex math? So if you take that length of how long it takes a computer to do something that it's learned how to do, it can think so much faster than a human. So a problem that might take a human an hour to figure out might take a computer less than three seconds. So like it gets to the point where it can learn and create like an algorithm within itself. It can mm -hmm. actually you know, be Terminator at that point, right? Like it can start figuring out and having an actual thought process. Like when does sentience it's, become it's a kinda, thing? It's kind of like the, the, uh, what, what, the singularity question, right? Like when does tech get at a point that it, it's like self-reproducing? It just keeps learning to a speed we can't keep up with. I don't think we're there yet, but I can see the pieces in place for how we could get there. You know, I do worry about it wings sometimes. Is, sometimes. Wings is afraid of AI trolls. That's what we're going to I was about to say <laughs> Wings will never be out of a job because AI can't quit a podcast twice in uh, two weeks. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I'll be good. I'll be good. I will, I will say it is funny, like a, a, full, a full respect to, to to everyone here. I don't mean anything, but it was funny when Wings DM me. He's like, you want to be on the show? And the last I saw was Wings quit. I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> don't worry. I, I, I got contacts with Turkey Tom. I was like, I better get in touch with Megan Dugan because Casey, Casey dips out. So we had a backup plan. <laughs> so so here's fun. a big one for you. Uh, you also make a lot of stuff about cryptids. Mm -hmm. I've seen UFOs and stuff. And I, I don't know if you know this, but Keemstar is all in on UFOs right now. Like he's a true believer. Believer. He's Fox and Mulder in this house and <laughs> it's making the rest of us insane. But I have to know as someone who's researched uh, all of this stuff, let's start with aliens. Are you a true believer? I don't believe in aliens as in like extraterrestrials from another planet. So I uh, let me cont like frame it a bit. I'm a Christian. Uh, so I believe in like God, the spiritual, the realm of the spiritual. I think a lot of that stuff um Maybe not like flying saucers, you know, but apparitions, people see stuff like that. I think a lot of that comes from the realm of the spiritual. The Bible says that uh, um, we entertain the realm of the unseen, you know, so I think a lot of it comes from that. So I believe in something greater, like something supernatural. I just don't necessarily think it's like aliens. Right. I mean, it, you know, I mean, if, uh, Christians can still believe in aliens. I think oh, yeah. God no, no, could, absolutely. God definitely could have created life somewhere else, you know? Correct. Yeah, they absolutely can. I, I know a lot of, like, uh, Christians who argue that point, you know, of, like, if God created life here, why not somewhere else? Totally understandable. I just sure. personally uh, haven't seen anything what that makes me think more so in aliens than, like, the spiritual. Yeah, yeah. What happens but do you think the aliens would void the, you know, I mean, at one time the Catholic Church thought, you know, if the world was, uh, it, most people thought the sun rotated the, around the, the earth. The geocentric model, yeah. Yeah, yeah and yeah. I mean, the Catholic Church didn't come clean with that until, like, 100 years ago. Yeah, they, like, killed people <laughs> you know? for it, threw them in jail. <laughs> they, were, they were pretty yeah, bad yeah, about yeah, it. Exactly. <laughs> so, so let me ask you the same question. Does that null and void your belief? No, no. I, if uh, if that if that be the case, no, no, if, if no. We are getting visited. So I don't think. All right. There, there's a lot of times that like statutes of man have got in way of the statutes of God, right? 
like God, it, in my belief system, right? God created the world. Mm-hmm. God created the order, nature, all that stuff. But back in like the Bible times, people didn't know what cells were, what atoms were, things like that, right? It sure. doesn't mean it didn't exist. It just means they didn't know about it. So when they come up for different explanations, like I think it was it was one of the uh, early Greek philosophers, maybe Aristotle. I'm probably getting that wrong and someone's yelling at me. But whoever thought there were four different elements that composed everything. Yeah, like mucus. Yeah, yeah, stuff like that. Or like, yeah, when you get into the Dark Ages and there's like the the red bile, the yellow bile stuff, like they were all wrong. And the church, the organization of the church supported a lot of the wrong ideas, but that doesn't change what God made. So as time goes on and we learn more about it, it doesn't mean that God was wrong. It just means people who wore the clothing of God were wrong. Basically. I don't know about you. I hate going to church on Sundays. The aliens but, come down and be like, well, that ain't going no more. Well, modern medicine has came a long way because like if you think 150 years ago, well, I only think it's 150 years, but like Abraham Lincoln didn't die from the gunshot wound. He died because they tried to bleed his blood out to get fresh blood into him. <laughs> yeah, first yeah. Humors, I didn't think of Washington. You think of Washington? Is that Washington? You think of Washington? Yeah, it was Washington. Yeah, it was Washington. Yeah, was Washington. yeah but like but Lincoln did him. die like days later, though. It took him a while. Yeah, he did. Yeah, like medicine has came so far and so fast at this point. But I had I had a question before we get off the aliens. Is like, what happens to your belief system if aliens do visit us and they don't look like us? Well, it's similar to what I said about uh, like the atoms, right? Like there were a lot of people, if you read like old church records, when there were discoveries in like biology and stuff, uh, like dinosaurs, when like dinosaur bones were found or whatever, there were a bunch of people mm-hmm. like, oh, I don't know if I can believe in God anymore. And my question to that's always like, what? <laughs> like, <laughs> like if God created the world and the universe and everything else and like there were things about it we didn't know yet why does finding something else about it change your idea of god like for example i said i don't believe in aliens right if aliens landed on earth tomorrow and climbed out of a ship i wouldn't be like oh god's not real because they exist no i would say okay my belief in what i thought the universe was was wrong that doesn't i would say my church lied to me and it's fraud and i'd sue them well that's 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 also the aliens i guess (laughs) What if the aliens stepped off the ship and they're like, do you have a moment to speak about our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ? <laughs> that would then, right then. Get them going to church. Yeah. <laughs> I'm all about that Pascal yeah. Wavy. Because <laughs> like, here's my, here's my thing church. with aliens. I believe aliens exist. I just don't believe they've ever visited us. Yeah, the because, chances, because like, they, if they do, because there's so the many stars, showing up. because there's so many stars and planets out there that could possibly be in the Goldilocks zone of their potential star, the chances of another life form not happening is very, very slim. Have, have you ever heard right? of uh, the Great Filter Theory? No, I have What's not. What's that? It's the idea that if there are alien civilizations, um, because as we learn more about tech and travel, we start to do the math of like, okay, a spaceship can move this fast. Uh, to reach the nearest planet would still take, you know, like centuries, right? Uh, outside of our solar system, of course. Correct. So you would need, like, you need to travel, like, faster than the speed of light, and you would need this technology and that technology, which theoretically may be possible, but the resources needed to gather it would be immense, and that would cause societal downfall. That would cause an overthrow. That could, you know, erode civilization, blah, blah, blah. Basically, the idea is that the reason... If aliens exist, no planet has been able to make interplanetary travel is because there is a great filter of social dynamics, of resources, what have you, allowing that tech to be in place. Basically, everyone isn't hits the, universe, the ceiling. Isn't the universe also continually expanding so that gets exponentially harder every time the longer yep. you wait? Yep. It gets, it gets more and more unlikely as time goes on. Yeah, it's entirely possible that ancient civilizations existed, lived, explored the universe, and died out, and they would have never gotten anywhere near close to us. Uh, I think one of the biggest theories I've ever seen is saying that if there are aliens, the chances of them sharing the same time window as us is very, very small. But so yeah, the other yeah. question I wanted to ask you about is let's talk about cryptids for a second. All right. Um, because I have, I have friends who are fascinated with them. Of course, I grew up... And I live in Bigfoot territory. Everything's about Bigfoot up in Branson now. Every time we go up there, like you, you claim you, the way they act, you would expect Bigfoot to be walking down the street there shaking hands. You believe in Bigfoot? Jesus I don't Christ. believe in Bigfoot. Know, I don't believe in any of this stuff, but I have that, to this know. Is, this is, do you have any belief in any of these cryptids? To, to be honest, no, not really. Uh, I mean, some of the ones, some of the cryptids, sure, like ocean monsters. You know, stuff like that, like undocumented species of super shark and stuff. I think sure, yeah, that plausible. Makes sense. But as far as like, you know, Bigfoot, the goat man, Jersey devil. No, not really. Um, I, th- I think 
I'll, I don't say that in videos because I think that takes a lot of the fun out of it, right? To just course, be like, yeah. this isn't real because. Um, but Smart. at the same time, I think they're very interesting in real and real in what they represent culturally. So like, I've talked about this before, but like the Goat Man, for example, he's a combination between like horror stories from the 50s combined with old like Bible Belt religious imagery combined with like Dark Age uh, wit witchcraft practices of these human animal hybrids and it's all these different stories rolled up into the legend of a goat man that runs around in the woods of maryland right um yeah it's it's interesting how these creatures exist that's kind of come out of our collective consciousness so i think they're very real in the way they represent us but no i i don't think there's a goat person in the woods as cool as that would be I don't who would win in a fight mothman or goat man <laughs> uh i would have to say mothman because he can fly really fast i would, th I would think red eyes too. He's, he does have big most, red eyes it's true who is the most bangable cryptid also one? probably mothman no <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah there's this one there's this one funny cryptid it's called the yaren uh it's a it's kind of like uh bigfoot but in china uh, and the idea was that there was like a whole race of these things up in the mountains, which interestingly, these legends may have came off of like Mongolian invaders in ancient China. And that may have been where the story mm. of these large hairy men who were just wearing animal furs, who would come pillage towns and steal women. It could have just been legends surrounding like invaders. That's what I mean by it's interesting how these stories come about. But anyway, mm. so the story of the Yaren is that they were these big, uh, like seven foot tall, hairy men that didn't have any women in their uh species so they would instead come kidnap uh human women and then have children with them <laughs> years later the story got gender swapped to that it was these like seven foot tall women who were like awesome. very busty and hot and attractive so all of the men of the village would pretend to be kidnapped <laughs> <laughs> and they would run up the mountain and be husband yeah, get this new <laughs> too, exactly so it's like whole villages all the men would disappear according to the stories uh to because they were all tragically kidnapped one night and none of the women for some reason <laughs> so yeah probably well, those the seven foot tall bigfoot women i guess well i don't i don't believe any cryptids either but but you said like the goat man being like a hybrid animal don't we have scientifically hybrid animals like the liger and the wolfen yeah yeah so you can have i'm gonna mess up my terminology here my wife's a vet she's gonna kill me uh but you have king to follow more class you can have crossovers within the same genus i believe uh and to create new species but you can't go further back up the tree so it has to be something pretty close to each other uh, domestic cats are 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 mixed with uh wild cats all the time yeah yeah stuff like that or you could have like yes. uh obviously a, a horse and a donkey right stuff like that yeah, yeah. but you couldn't have like a horse yeah. and a dog or something that's so far yeah, apart yeah, on the it's tree gotta be yeah. pretty close yeah exactly way. i've seen a hybrid dolphin too there's a pacific bottlenose with a it's a, a it's a wolfen. Yeah. It's a wolfen. A wolfen. It's a wolfen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, they're both dolphins. Both. Uh, they're I'm, both dolphins. I mean, they sound really bangable, so I'm all on board. You know? <laughs> Apparently, dolphins do that a lot. Funny enough. Apparently, boogie you f anything. Yeah, I, know. <laughs> I, I was I was gonna ask like, could they like take like a woolly mammoth and like impregnate an elephant and create like. Like, bring the species back. <laughs> man, that poor elephant. <laughs> um, th there's theories about that kind of thing. If we found like preserved uh, tissue samples, or like it, it would really need to be like an egg or an embryo or something, could we reproduce it in the way we do like other in vitro fertilizations? Um, there's been theories around that with stuff like what's that? The t uh, what's he called? The thylacine or the Tasmanian tiger. It was this species of like marsupial thing from australia that went extinct in the 30s um the idea is if we have samples of that could, is there like a modern marsupial that could like be a, a surrogate could there be a surrogate for it so th there's theories around the issue is the woolly mammoth i think we, for one we don't have like viable samples to do something that it tends with they were also larger i believe than elephants, than elephants. and they're a lot bigger than elephants. they also like grew, yeah but, but like, they, they'd be a hybrid birds. like it's kind of like a like a men pin like a like a doberman pincher is obviously not going to impregnate like a chihuahua but like if right. you start stepping it down eventually it gets smaller well you can you can like in vitro do like a, a doberman and a chihuahua right you could like take it and like yeah. get these weird combinations like test tube babies right there's ideas that that could be possible but really really the hang up is we don't Wouldn't have the chihuahua, to do female it. chihuahua just explode 
Uh, it it would. Birth, what though, would happen? I mean, like if if you kept the pregnancy alive, yeah, it would. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but before that would happen, the how about an Irish be... wolfhound in a Shih Tzu? I mean, how would that go? <laughs> <laughs> the pre assuming it survived the mating process. Um, yeah, yeah. It, it, the pregnancy would be naturally terminated. The body couldn't take care of gotcha. something that big. Really, what it is is we don't have the samples and we don't have the technology to recreate that. But that's kind of like the whole Jurassic Park theory, right? The idea we could take like animals that do exist and use them for the missing links of stuff that doesn't exist and make some like you know weird hybrid animal. Make a park that goes around eating kids. That'd be awesome. Yeah, it, yeah, yeah that whole that whole, whole, the that whole amber theory is bullshit anyway. Though, like if, if a, a fly got trapped in amber and got fossilized, the blood would be. Yeah, terrible. I mean, I mean, it's it's yeah. sci-fi. Of course, it's you know? bullshit. It's a fictional yeah, movie. Yeah, yeah. It's not fine. It's a reason enough. It is enough of a like explanation, so to speak, that an audience can watch it and say, "Okay, I understand what's happening." Uh, but that that's all. Yeah, it yeah, is. Yeah. that's all. It, it's a tool. It's a it's it's kind of a well, it's not a trope, but it's it's enough science to get people. Okay, now I can swallow the rest of this. Yeah, book. yeah. Right. It's like yeah, all right, yeah, let's yeah, get to the dinosaurs really eating the law. You're on the toilet. That's what I'm yes. here for. Yeah, exactly. Yes, because of the fly and the amber. Yep. There you go. Yep. I'm good. I mean, we're, yeah. Hey, I, I was there. I'm like, all right, works for me. Let's go. <laughs> it's in the <laughs> yeah, amber. Right. We're good. Yeah, because if they don't say that, then it's like, where the f these dinosaurs come from? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I like in the movie how the, the dinosaurs like started switching their sex almost immediately without any kind of like evolution. Like it just, oh, I'm yeah, just it took be a like a day. Now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like, good Lord. You think in, it would take like years in of real life to happen in real life. That species of frog they're talking about that can switch their sex. If they're in an environment that doesn't have the opposing gender. Isn't that called the Alex Jones? <laughs> um, that's what he was talking about when he said the frog's gay he was talking about some frog that could switch its sex right? oh, like, how, oh how bad oh, is this oh, oh. I, th I thought you were making a joke about alex jones himself i'm sorry I'm <laughs> well no no alex jones like I'd like you know people it sounds like a complete insane maniac when he goes to turn the frog's gay the but frog's apparently day, yeah. he was referencing a frog that can change gender and usually i guess they have situations where they change gender because of chemical like i was talking about pollutants that could yeah could uh, uh do that and he just said they're turning the fox yeah so what what happened if i recall correctly what happened with that story mm. is there was like some kind of production facility that was pumping chemicals into the local water supply yeah. and normally the frogs would like change gender in that environment mm -hmm. because if there's no females but they weren't able to so the male frogs were trying to mate with other male frogs but they couldn't obviously because the gender <laughs> never happened so that that led to like alex prison. jones breakdown of him yeah. it was like prison <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, uh you know it's kind of like the amber it gets me through and now i understand yeah yeah yeah, you know? yeah see there you go <laughs> that's why the frogs are gay <laughs> got me in the door <laughs> <laughs> now we can get to him screaming about 1776 commencing again and everything else yeah yeah that would be awesome too <laughs> no. yeah you guys should have I him mean, on i think that'd go well alex oh, jones oh yes, yes. Oh, yeah. alex jones for like, sure oh, for boogie, all these, like uh boogie and, and wings are a bunch of left-wing kooks they start arguing with him and start yelling at him that's why they, that's why it'd be a great episode that's why it'd be fantastic yeah, right. Point. Well, uh, let's start f with you. Come to think of it, I mean, I'll yeah, be yeah, yeah, go, you, I, yeah. Throw something at me. Well, I'm definitely, no, I'm definitely mid left, but I, Alex Jones, I would just love to wind him up and let him go, man. I mean, he's fun. Good Lord. Like, it, it's he's it's entertaining wild to as watch. Hell. Yeah, like obviously, yeah. like damage done by like accusing parents of being crisis actors and stuff like that, which he's admitted, you know, fault to several times since. Obviously, there's times where like it goes past fun into damaging. But hearing someone sure. yell about the frogs are gay now is it's yeah, just it doesn't fun. hurt nobody. Exactly. Yeah, it's just fun. Yeah. Billion dollars from him and his cat. He really, I think he paid. <laughs> yeah, you know. it was like a billion. Yeah, no joke. So we discovered that you don't believe in any of the cryptozoology. Have you ever researched something that you didn't believe in going into, but you started to maybe see maybe it would be real, or there's a possibility of it, or is that just a non sequitur? Uh, no, no, that's happened a lot. And like, I'll go into something like, oh, well, it can't be that bad, and then it is that bad. Uh, the vampire attack in the Philippines was one of those. Uh, What's where, that? So wait, wait, I just so so you went into that and you thought like okay there uh, you went into oh, there's no such thing as vampires you thought well, well, maybe well, there well, is hold, vampires hold on hold on to, to, to clarify I saw I think it was a comment or a, a, it was a po a tweet something that said um, remember when the CIA pretended to be vampires to uh, kill a bunch of people in the Philippines 
So I saw that and I'm like, okay, this is clearly like exaggerated. This didn't happen, whatever. And then I I, I do the research and I'm like, oh my gosh, <laughs> the CIA pretended to be well, vampires. Can you, get, can you give people. me a little like the synopsis of this? Situation? Yeah, yeah. So basically in the 1950s, um, during World War II, government put together a group of operatives to keep track on the Axis powers. Uh, and that group was known as the OSS, the Office of Strategic Services, Operation, whatever. Um, anyway, after World War II yeah. ended, they had compiled this whole think tank of like foreign intelligence workers. OSS is a precursor to the CIA. Exactly, right? yeah. So, that, so okay. the OSS becomes the CIA. And immediately, America's next concern was Russia, as soon as the war was over. The so Southeast Asia became like a chessboard for Russia and the US like this is my ally this is my ally and they kept flipping eventually Vietnam came as like a symptom of that um but one of the islands that had a strong communist regime in it was the Philippines and America wanted influence there so there was several years of the United States performing like these shadow hand um psyop tactics things to convince the people to turn from communism over to the United States what have you eventually there was this group called the huck rebels which was basically like a uh, a group of farmers who were fighting against um the power in the philippines at the time that was pro-america so the cia started doing all of these weird tactics to get rid of them they would take a plane like a little biplane and attach speakers to it and fly through the clouds on a cloudy day and play like the sounds of a god cursing them in their native tongue to make them think God is mad at them. <laughs> uh, they would paint okay. eyes on trees to make them think they were being watched by some forest demon or whatever. Anyway, eventually they figured out that the people of the region had a legend of a creature called an aswang, which is like a vampire. It's like a, a resurrected vampire or whatever. Um, so one night this, this group of CIA agents waits for the Hucks to do a patrol around. They had like a patrol base set up on top of a mountain and they were doing like a nightly uh watch around the perimeter and they grabbed a guy and drug him off the trail and they stabbed him in the neck with an ice pick twice and then hung him upside down to bleed him dry and then threw him back at his post so whenever his guys come to look for him later they find him drained of blood with two puncture holes in his neck americans did that Amer the cia did yeah 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 we did that uh and it worked the the hucks the hucks took off off the mountain <laughs> they abandoned it the next day um yeah, so, yeah, the CIA pretended to be vampires. So there's stories like that where I go in, like, this didn't happen. Then I'm like, okay, this happened. Uh, the, the Martin Luther King assassination was similar. That I'm like, it's probably mm. not a conspiracy. And then it it absolutely was a conspiracy. It's the only one that I do believe is a conspiracy. Yeah, that one. That one's like... Because they have the... Uh, I, I think the first time I saw it was on Unsolved Mysteries in the 80s. And uh, I guess there was a group of... I mean, what's his name? Like... The shooter ended up in England with like two hundred grand. Yep, that doesn't happen. All, you know, I, 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 think given... it, I don't think it's like really even harebrained or magic bullet like to say yep. there was a conspiracy. But the like the conspiracy wasn't. I haven't seen your video on it. The conspiracy wasn't like grandiose or CIA. It was a bunch of locals, correct? It well, it was the FBI who was financing it, but it was the Memphis Police Department. It seems who carried out the actual shooting. Yeah. Well, what about what about what about the, this group of um. Like it was a group of individuals in a restaurant that were local to the place that yeah, knew so uh, the shooter. It was uh, the guy across the street uh, who owned, yes. I forget his name. He owned the restaurant across from the hotel where King was he staying. He had a black girlfriend, too. Uh, and, no, uh, the shooter, the the shooter had a black girlfriend for oh, a while. Okay. Uh, what, what's, uh, what was his name? Uh, what was his name? Yeah, yeah. Um, not Lee Harvey Oswald. It's the other one. Uh, he died right he's down the street he's, from where he's, I grew up. Hold on. Yeah. <laughs> what is? He died recently, like last 10 years. Uh, James Earl Ray. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, James, you could prove that he had FBI contact or that's a theory. He said, no, no, no. I'm not saying that he was a, that James Earl Ray was there. The okay. owner of the restaurant across the street from where King was shot the day before the shooting had a meeting with the Memphis Police Department or like the sergeant, of a shooter uh -huh. at the police department and a few other people. Okay. Um, they're the they're the conspirators, I believe. James Earl Ray. Mm -hmm was put up by a guy named raul that's the only name he got from him um mm -hmm. who bought him a hotel room said that they were doing a gun deal there and to bring a gun inside and leave it basically and then wait for um wait outside and be the getaway driver in case something goes bad with the gun deal he's doing inside 
Um, it seems that James Earl Ray was just a patsy. He was made to take the fall for it. James Earl Ray was originally in jail because he robbed a grocery store and forgot to put the car in park. So the car rolled away while he was robbing the was grocery store. a good store. guy to get a patsy for. Him, yeah. Th- and that <laughs> guy supposedly evaded the largest manhunt in FBI history with well, hundreds of thousands London, of dollars. Yeah, mistaken. they found him they in found London. Him in, yeah. Ooh. Yeah. It's, it's absurd. They didn't even do a good job at hiding it. But yeah, there, there's stuff like that. Like MLK, the CIA thing. It's mostly government conspiracies. Um, there hasn't been a time I've been like, oh, I don't think this cryptid doesn't exist. Then it turns out it does. Right. Maybe some like other stuff that's about- more like I, I've kind of had my mind changed about like psychedelics being weird stuff because I've seen more and more stories about them being strange so stuff like that. But yeah, no cryptids or anything. What about what about shit like MK Ultra? Yeah, that definitely happened. It's so that for sure happened. Like there's released reports about it and stuff. Uh, for those that don't know, basically during the 70s, late 60s, early 70s, the CIA was like bringing in homeless people and saying that they wanted to run some tests and they'd give them like $500 or whatever. Uh, what they were actually doing is they were pumping them full of psychedelics uh, to see what would happen. Yeah, they got 500 bucks on top of them. And they yeah. got 500 Yeah, yeah. 500 in a high. Hey, that's I mean, just called a good time. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah. <higher. laughs> Yeah, think about that book. If you were in the 60s, you'd be getting paid to do that. Would well, that be fun? Yeah, um, I, yeah, I'd be boy, way, <laughs> way better than what I did. Instead, he has some Indian ripping his magic cards off. So. <laughs> um, Indian being Native American here, not like... In, I'll uh, say what I want. But... <laughs> in, the, there you go. Oh, <laughs> Tommy's one step away from calling him an engine. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's your part of the country, not mine. <laughs> Fucking engine the uh the main thing with mk ultra like the cons- so we know it happened the conspiracy around it is that according to reports they are records they were doing it to try to test the limits of human conditioning to see basically how hard you could rewire someone's brain into doing what you want like if you put if you monitor a guy for several years and put plant people around him to convince him that this one reality exists what happens so the conspiracy is that a lot of either famous figures or tragedies that happened were a result of MKUltra. Maybe someone who was in the middle of the testing for it went crazy and shot up a neighborhood, right? Or maybe uh, they became some uh, political figure like uh, Jim Jones, for example, that went off the rails and led to the deaths of a bunch of people. That's normally where the MKUltra stuff comes into play. Um, it, it, mm. We know it existed. The question is how far, uh, how far are the consequences of it? What, what did they what did they learn is there any evidence of that, that uh they learned pretty anything? much if you well i mean it was a lot the of 60s. times governments do this sh- and they realize there's, there's nothing that bears no fruit from from their yeah. like research it seems like if you torture someone enough they'll say whatever you want them to say <laughs> that, yeah that seems to be the bulk yeah, of it. but like, like suggestions a powerful tool dude like you ever see those prosperity preachers that will be like yeah. yo see sow the seed Put it on a credit card today, and God will give it yep. back to you twenty five. Yeah, fold. but that's down south. You dummies fall for that. Shit. No, that, it, dude, so many people fall for that. They had they, there's I this know, guy named dummies. Pat Robertson. He has he has, he's dead now. Know, he but like he had this um, Christian club. network. To watch it. Yeah, he yeah. Smoke pot and watch Pat Robertson. <laughs> you watch Pat Robertson. <laughs> <laughs> but like, it, like human suggestion. It, it's like what, like like the reason I brought MK Ultra up because like one of the plagues of the United States right now is like you know mass shootings and it's like yeah. how many of these that's are a, actually that's one people... of the pretty big reaching theories of a lot of modern it's shootings all yeah. mk ultra <laughs> it, it all can't be mk ultra but the fact is that like how is it happening over and over and over again and why there's so there's been purely several psychological times. reasons it doesn't have to be conspiracy theoretic because it's something that exactly just, it, why. It, it, i'll give you a very simplistic answer and you should know this is a youtuber because you get attention it's guaranteed you're attention. dead and you're dead they, 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 but if you're crazy you don't see it that way yeah. maybe you convince yourself i can watch everybody freak out when i'm dead like a ghost you're dealing with people that are rational I, I here's the thing like people believe like the world is like slowly getting more and more violent which i don't believe at all i think the world's getting more and more safe right like from like the 1960s to now, like crime is down dramatically. But like in 1960, you didn't have people walking into schools and like shooting them up, but you do now. And what changed from that span of like 50 to 60 years? Because I mean, it's an event. It's an event. It every every everyone it's it's event. 
I think it'll actually go away when the when the media stops reporting on it like it's an event. Yeah. And actually, they're starting to do that. You, yep. Or there's just so many shootings, they can't cover I mean, them all. There's that YouTuber <laughs> who, like, killed his dad recently and then uploaded a oh, video yeah, of, yeah. like, his severed head, his head to YouTube. Yeah. And, and, right, and, like, he generally thought he was starting an event. He's like, you yeah. know, we we on the right, we need to go out and we need to mass murder all government officials sure. and they're all traitors and and you kill know. my dad and my stupid bureaucrat dad. Yeah, right. He started yeah. all by killing going. his bureaucrat so dad. Like, and they, 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 Boogie, you really played into my argument perfectly. There you go. There you go, Wings. Well, they think I'll be, I'll, I'll be other than you you here's what you see, Wings. You see a bunch of people getting killed for no good fucking reason. That's not the way they see it. No. no. I, well, I see he killed his lifeline and now I gotta take care of him. That's what I see there. I mean, you got to realize it's, it's the same delusion. I think these trolls I mean, they're, uh, they're, have. They're, you know. they're so. Wait, hold. Wait, the, the, did you just compare the trolls to mass shooters? Yes, he did. Yeah, well, yeah, they because, barely, because they managed to get <laughs> no, oh, I, both of these guys. No. Every everything that happens, they can somehow squeeze it in well, and okay, shoehorn so, it into whatever uh, is going on. All right, well, let it's me so tie funny. let me tie it in for you. The Christchurch shooter was a Kiwi farmer, right? He posted and live streamed all that stuff to Kiwi farms, right? Uh, and I he don't, genuinely I don't know what thought Christchurch is. Can you can you Christchurch is a place the, in the New, New Zealand, Zealand shooting? Yeah. Shot he also used to say really nasty things about Boogie and Kiwi. Oh no, I don't I don't did, think did he, he? I, I don't think I was on his radar. <laughs> yeah. See, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> but okay, I'm just saying on, the, let, let, these let guys a... think they're doing something. They think they're doing something. They think they're making the world a better place by picking on a random YouTuber they saw one day. You know? They nah, generally I think, think you're right about that, buggy. Yeah, I, 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 I see where you're coming from, and that they think that acts of like evil are going to fix stuff, right? Obviously, I, yeah, I mean, obviously, yeah. you agree it's like different scales, but of evil, right? Like, yeah. no, it's of the course, same obviously, scale. Yeah, 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 it's uh, just like killing kids. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah obvi in, obviously, in, different scales. But I, in, I know you know. In, yeah, yeah. in in my defense, I did get called a bad name once, and that was as bad as baby murder. Uh, just that, was, that <laughs> was as bad as. Uh, a mass shooting, Baby murder, yeah, of course. Yeah. yeah, but yeah. people like the Christchurch guy, like it. There's so many different factors that amount in a monster like that, right? There's there's some deep sense of social displacement, of personal displacement. There is years and years of conditioning through being told that this is who the enemy is. This is what the problem is. And then that combined with hate and negativity around you, it eventually results in someone saying, yeah, if I kill 50 people, that'll make the world a better place. Uh, it's There's so many factors that go into evil like that. And honestly, like to what Wings mentioned about like, where was this happening years ago? I think it was happening. I think it was just different, right? Like there were more yeah, serial, yeah, there's, there's, there were more serial killers. Yeah, it's back not like then, a, right? a kid never went to school in the '50s and didn't smoke his teacher. You probably could find 50 examples of that in the '50s. Yeah, yeah. You know, or maybe even more. You know, there, I mean, there's there's, like there, there's one guy I almost made a video about. Again, it was one of those stories that's so tragic I didn't want to cover. In 1947, a guy like in New York State, he was a school teacher, just decided to go plant two bombs under an elementary school, killed like 110 kids just Jesus. just felt like it one day like i think it was happening it was just the the way it was done and the tone around it was different but i think that kind of evil that kind of i need to take away from the world because in my head that fixes it i think that's always existed in some way yeah oh no i agree with you but i think what boogie was like it, it is this seems to be like like columbine reruns over and over again yeah whereas yeah. the cases back then like the evil's happening but they're drastically different whereas this particular evil constantly repeats i mean i think goes the, over yeah, and over yeah that's true. I, I think the fact true. that uh that we made columbine such an event made films about it, movies about I, it. God, I, that's yeah i think i think that's i what, was into it i was reading everything i was like if wendigoon was around i would have got his take yeah, on I bet, it i, I bet, bet you I watched a michael moore it. film didn't and you? Then, then i realized i was a part of the problem I, just, I don't know how many kids i killed over the years reading all that you know yeah i almost made a video about columbine but then i stopped myself like i don't want to give this more than it already has it, it feels like the, there's really not that much to it it's just two psychopaths yeah, and like found each other people are always trying to found find meaning there's a great movie I, i'm trying to think eight millimeter yeah 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 eight millimeter okay so there's a scene in the movie where like they they find one of the guys that was like involved in making this snuff film where they slaughter this little girl and the stuff films like 100 percent like legit it's not like yeah. the urban yeah. legends uh, uh that they they, they normally are um, and they, they ask him in the movie, is like, like, why did you do this? Why, why, why? Why, or why did he do this? Because I guess it was his boss that did it. And the guy answered, honestly, because he can. 
That's what it is. That's yeah. all it is. It's not like that. There's no deeper sort of meaning behind his madness. It's just uh, I wanted to fucking blow up a bunch of kids. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. Since we were yeah. down this can. rabbit hole and the video is thoroughly demonetized. Recently, a um, a school shooting happened and the kid survived, but their mother didn't take the kid home when the guidance counselor called and she just got charged with four counts of manslaughter. Do you guys think that's fair or unfair Wait, hold, and why? What, what's the specific? What? Yeah. Say that again. The, the shooter's mother took him home. No, mother and father bought a kid a gun. Okay. The kid was talking and glorifying mass shootings. So he got pulled into the guidance counselor's office and the principal was there and they called his mother to the school to talk about it. Okay. His mother was dismissive, want, had to get back to work, didn't take the kid home with her. And <laughs> at that day, man. he shot the school up. Wow. Oh, man. And then she tragic. just got charged with Oof. four and she shot four count and she got hit with four. I, I know she got it. I don't know if the husband got it, but she got four mm. counts of manslaughter. I don't the know what, if his, manslaughter's his, the right charge on that, but there's definitely some kind of like criminal negligence or something. I, I could see that, maybe. But, but you could say that with the school, too, right? Because they could have expelled him right then. And yeah, I don't. I, 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 would, I would be interested in learning the specifics of the case because, again, you telling me right now is the yeah, first like time it, I've heard You didn't it. take your kid. You didn't throw him the out and call the police yeah ex man. exactly I, I, I wonder what the dynamic there was like did they yeah. know he had a weapon in the school i assume not because that would be well, that, that's the that's, the, that's yeah. the linchpin she knew he she knew he owned a gun they didn't know he had a gun yeah, nobody know he brought it to school so right. yeah, if, yeah. if, yeah. if that if that was the case that again this, this could be a uh, first time i'm hearing it's through you so apologies if i get something he's right I, I just read this like an hour ago okay he's, he's, all right so pretty much right if a kid has a gun hidden in his backpack or something and they don't know about it and the mother knows he owns a gun and then they pull the mother to the school and say uh he keeps saying he's going to shoot people and the mother drives away then he pulls a gun and does it yeah i think something should happen i feel to the mom i don't th i would I, defer to the law like it I would defer to the law. Like, what yeah. legal responsibilities does somebody have like that? Because and like, if it doesn't fall into the law, I think she should get off. Like, but, I mean, I know if my kid burns down a house, I could be held legally and maybe even criminally right, liable, yeah, depending yeah. on the circumstance. And, and the only reason I bring this up is because this is the first case I, I kind of, like, remember this happening. Because, like, did the Sandy Cook mother get any legal? No, she got she got killed. She died first. Uh, yeah, so she got killed. Oh, first, she got yeah. killed. Okay, okay. The like, shooter, that, that so sense, what... Like, what it was the mom's guns. They were in a safe that was unlocked. Uh, the son took one of the guns, shot the mother, went to the school and did the shooting. Somebody sent me a video of that kid doing DDR in an arcade. Oh, <laughs> he's just the, staring at the, the camera. Sandy Hook the shooter? What, with like the Sandy Hook kid? Dancing. He's dancing. <laughs> Adam Lanza. Yeah, somebody sent me a video a couple of years ago. I don't know what I did with it, but it's clearly Adam Lanza. It's not like faked or anything. And he's just staring in the camera with that. I mean, one ugly kid, man, let me tell you. And, and, and then the next thing he was doing DDR. Tommy's going to hit on me on this, but like, I, I feel like a lot of these issues, they fall into the same category of severe male loneliness. Like, I feel like there's an epidemic of like sure men that don't feel like, like they're good enough. I don't disagree with you on that. Well, no, it's, because it's, it's kind of like lighting bank. But here's the thing: like lots like of that. males are lonely and they don't go around shooting. Correct. People. Yeah. Yeah. Right. It's still, it's but, still yeah. but would you agree that it, the vast majority that do it are in that category, though? So what you're saying, it's all women's fault. No, <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm not blaming yeah, it on women. I'm blaming it on. I'm blaming it on a lack of fathers and <laughs> I'm blaming on a lack of fathers in people's lives. Like fathers, they don't need a father. They need some. <laughs> I mean, honestly, if women put out more, it might be less. Yeah, awesome. So really they should problem. give it a shot. They should try. <laughs> yeah. Dude, the, the whole problem with the world is women and not giving out s and thinking about it. Like, you could, know, you, you, could, could you imagine asked, like that's the, what Biden runs on for his second term? Like, <laughs> I think it's great. He might. Have you seen him lately? <laughs> Dude, Biden has no chance to win. I don't know what Biden's gonna, what platform Biden's gonna run on, but the good news is he doesn't Rumble. know either. <laughs> he has, yeah. They haven't gave, ever, they haven't gave him the folder yet. Did you guys? Do you remember when the incel subreddit was big on Reddit? And do you yeah. guys ever go read that stuff? And you can see no, it archived no. to this day. Windagoon, I would love to see you make a video on that stuff. But they are like right, right next door to school shooters. They are like the mental illness Olympics there, they were having over there. There's the depression thing, Olympics. Th there's this thing that happens where like people live their whole lives in like this constant cloud of negativity, right? 
of like yeah. you, my life sucks and I can't do anything about it, and then eight hundred other people. <laughs> and, <laughs> well, hold on, to, to give some credit. Boy, you got and, both. Welcome to Lockout Puck. And then. <laughs> I mean, but Tommy, that's an unfair statement. We're doing something about it. We're actually making a show. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's, you got you there. Uh, but but no, they, then they have like 800 other people who are like, yeah, me too. Uh, let's talk about that. Let's talk about how mad that makes us. And they just stay mm. in this like cycle of it. And eventually it spits out people like the Christchurch shooter or whatever, right? Like it. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Yeah, it's 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 tragic. I don't really know. I don't even know how you moderate that because you can't be like, okay, people aren't allowed to be sad, right, online and talk to each other. But it's just no. It's I, really I can unhealthy. moderate that. I'll make them unsaid real quick. Yeah, <laughs> so you go just take them to the house of an answer Yeah. yeah. No, yeah. I just beat them. Beat them until they <laughs> smile. <laughs> that's you know, if you beat a dog, you just find guys. the couch, Tommy. I don't, I don't know. I was in the army. I saw it work. And all of a sudden, everybody's yeah, I've seen it work too in full metal jacket. Where you up, and all of a sudden, you're smiling. You still do, in fact, you'll do the right, whatever the fuck they want. What? Hey, did we just talk about that? You just torture somebody until they, they tell you whatever and they, and they want. They get, well, exactly. You get yeah. them to do whatever and you want. And you were in the army, so Tommy wasn't part of MK Ultra. So, therefore, I was, uh, yeah. <laughs> so, so you probably mentioned Did you ever before. haze anybody in the army? Haze? Yeah. No, nah, I just picked on him like a pick on you. <laughs> <That's about it. laughs> yeah, so did you see a hazing this... or anything like that? That's a college thing. That's not really an army thing. Oh, I'll just ask you because like the Full Metal Jackets reference. Because like they, hey, I they... think that the, the, the um, I was in eleven Bravo, so like uh, hmm. uh, the infantryman. So I think the infantry. That's more an infantry thing. I wasn't. I wasn't infantry. So maybe you, I know your brother probably did. So not me. Uh, no, 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 no. I, he never told me about any of that. I was just wondering if that was actually a thing. Like if somebody actually, we all up. sucked each other's. How about that? There you go. Hey, do that uh, gaze. I mean, like you go off base now after boot camp. <laughs> I've, I've got I've got a bunch of friends in the 82nd, and I can confirm that they did in fact haze a lot. And like, yeah, yeah, 82nd. I could see that at the 82nd. I came to Germany with water slides and in German tech, it's totally different. You know? A bit different than Afghanistan, but same thought. Yeah, same well, idea. Yeah, 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 yeah. I went to Iraq, but then I watched those 11 Bravos, and I'd be, I waved to them. I'm like, hey, good luck, guys. <laughs> Have fun. Um, go get I'm going to... I'm gonna go drink some fake beer. You know? <laughs> so, is there anything you want to plug um, while you're here? Oh uh, no, I will say. Um, What's he got to plug? He's a million on episode. Why don't you plug us, motherfucker? Yeah, well, yeah. I understand that, but like, but like, go subscribe. Uh, we do have an audience podcast. that might never heard of him. <laughs> uh, Maybe his podcast. <laughs> wait, wait, is it? Is it? It's Lawcal Live now, right? Because Lawcal Podcast yes. is the one that got stolen. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. DSP. Yeah. Oh, the other guy. I forgot. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Not, I don't know. Ryan. I blame DSP for everything. Yeah, <laughs> I, I do got a couple DSP. more questions for you. Of course, is there yeah. ever been a legitimate snuff film? I'm not talking about a filming of a murder. Has there ever been a, a legitimate snuff? Because I, I, I looked into this. Admittedly, it's been about 20 years. Um, every road I came down to the end to, which is what 8 millimeters about, strangely enough, is there really wasn't. Now, that may have changed since I, I looked into it. Is there a snuff film? Um, I mean, it, it depends on your definition. Like red rooms, no. I, 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 made made to entertain, like graphic murder, uh, to uh, maim to titillate. I'm not talking about like Mexican faces, cartel faces videos or anything like that, right? Yeah, that's yeah. Not, that's how I'm talking about. Or just a filming of a murder. I mean, you call the JFK assassination a murder. There's Has there n- ever been a snuff film that there, you found? Okay, so there's no red rooms, right? Uh, okay. Or anything like that. But there is. I I I don't want. I'm sorry to the audience who wasn't aware of this. There's this specific genre of like photography that mm-hmm. is. I, I believe the word they use for it's like hurtcore or something. Maybe I'm thinking of like when it's on animals specifically, which which is a whole nother yeah. can of evil, right? Yeah. Um, but there's specific genres that are like torture combined, and some of those I've heard stories of like people getting like skin flayed, people getting like an arm cut off stuff like that have you verified it though is legit uh i've seen yourself. like screenshots or you don't do that uh, are you talk are about you, it i've seen like, like screenshots people talk about on boards but no i haven't i haven't gone looking no, okay. for it because all of this stuff gotcha. is like Fair next enough. door to actual illegal material so i can't gotcha. verify it myself as existing but from Fair communications enough. online that's the farthest i know about i do like internet red rooms the idea that like there's these dark web live streams where you can pay to watch someone get murdered those don't exist um okay, it's normally people thought. trading around videos of like cartel decapitations or stuff like that right gotcha most of the time now that being said there like i said there's some 
cinematography that gets to that level. You would think it's a snuff film. Yeah, gotcha. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. You know, so, so it's, it's, still, it's still in the urban legends area. Yeah. Isn't it really fascinating okay. what people like enjoy? Because I'm about as vanilla as it gets. I think I feel, a lot of times I feel like I won the genetic lottery. I can't imagine getting off to that. That's insane. I me. think. I, I think about this a lot. Funny enough, uh, how do you be four hundred pounds and be vanilla bats? <laughs> Everybody, I, I, you. I, 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 I have a quick. I got a quick from Boogie about this. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Boogie, you were like a porn website administrator for one, weren't you? Yeah, yeah I did it from right. like, yeah, I did it from like ninety eight to two thousand and four, and so like when I it was booming, it. so like you got in the ground floor, you should be a millionaire. But yeah, like, no I was, like, I was lazy that, about that. Didn't that too, affect your like YouTube at all? Like having to see all this. You're uploading yes. and like categorizing. Yeah, I, people do not believe me when I tell them this, but it does nothing for me anymore. It's just a thing that exists. It's like videos of like a car I don't care to drive. It's just a, I, I don't care about it. I don't look at it. It's just, it's pointless to me now. And on, on top of that, I had to, like a lot of the categories that I had, um, I had to look at a lot of gay stuff too. And like back in the day, you had to, you had to <laughs> explore like every link on the website before you would list it would and make sure that everything was legitimate. So I had to look at that stuff. Well, I'm not into it. I sure as hell did not enjoy yeah. it, but it was part of the job. Um, and uh, it just, it was miserable. It, it was fun for about a month. And at the end of that month, I'm like, wow, this is just purely awful. I wonder with I knew. like a lot of people who have stuff like that, like sure there there's like harmless kinks or whatever. Like, even though yeah. I think it's kind of gross, like the foot stuff or whatever, it really doesn't hurt anyone <laughs> at the end of the day. Right. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that comes from maybe like when they were an adolescent, maybe they saw something or caught a glimpse. Something, of something. got crossed up and developed. So, something got something crossed like up. That. Exactly. Yeah, 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 yeah. But then there's stuff like the torture stuff, the harm stuff that I think I almost feel like it has to come from a trauma of some kind. Right. Like, I, I don't know how you get like someone screaming, getting cut up crossed in your brain with pleasure. Yeah, unless that's just, there's that's just murder, right? dude. That's exactly. Just, like, I mean, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, 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 I suppose I could, I mean, I'm pretty vanilla too in this area, but like, I, I suppose like, like, I'm, I'm sure there's people that do BDSM, get their ass whipped or whatever the f*** they like. Yeah, sure, and sure. That's they, they live normal lives and they don't really bother anybody. For some reason, it like titillates them. They want to feel, they, they want to feel like they're doing Once you're getting into like, wrong. like yeah. injuries, I think that's not a, you're just a maniac. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. My, I, I my feel best like friend in high school likes there. the cat of nine tails. Yeah, no, yeah. Like, if you want to do that, do that. Do that to your fucking blue in the face or the whatever. I mean, <laughs> where really they matter. take like they take like the leather whip and slap your back over and over again. I mean, like if the, there's a lot of people who want to feel like they're doing something wrong, like that's exciting to them. Like sure, uh, and also go to work. There's yeah, <laughs> and there's also people who like uh, they, they like the sensation of pain, right? Um, sure. like, again, you're not hurting anyone, but again, when you get pleasure out of seeing someone else get hurt, that's gotta mean something. I feel. Yeah, you know? I agree. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Well, what about like the guys in like Vietnam and stuff that got addicted to killing people? I, you know, I've never heard of that. You could, you know, well, you, you I, never, I think he's you never seen kill shots. Addicted. Well, like, yeah. like, I kill somebody today. I mean, come on, man. No, no, like, like, I do some bad, I, I do some bad <laughs> mother. Man, I never heard of anything like Maybe that. Maybe not addicted. Maybe he didn't mean addicted. Maybe no, he, no, that's, he that's, that's the word so they like, use. There's, they miss there's a, combat, right? They miss the thrill well, of it, so to speak. Yeah, but that, a, I mean, you know, that, that's the same thing. You could, that you could also miss bungee jumping and jumping out of airplanes. That's like the same thing, you know? That, that, it, it, honestly, they miss the, they miss the rush know, of it. Those type of sold, yeah, that's a, that's a different kind of it. It's not about killing people. It's about, you know, going in and like, uh, going in, getting in and out clean. You know, I could see, I could see missing that for sure. Yeah, that's pretty rare though. Once you're done with it, you're like, you get them. You get away how would you turn that off? From most guys I know, yeah, lots of guys do. Lots of yeah. guys do. And I actually, as a veteran, I I really resent people pretending that it's like a common problem that's like soldiers can't turn it off. My uncle is a Vietnam vet, and and this this bullshit is put out there. The kind of stuff that like Wings is talking about. And everybody, oh, you're crazy. Like, you must like killing. You must you, you must not be able to handle yourself. Tons and tons of soldiers have done this for generations. They've turned the switch. It goes on all the time. It's not like, I'm not saying like PTSD isn't a problem and there aren't kind of issues. But every kind of situation where you'd be able to point to, or here's where a soldier went a nut. It's the exception, not the rule. You could have more kids that never seen combat shoot up at school than you will find a soldier doing much the same thing. It's actually quite rare. A, you got a valid, valid point here. I think most of the time, like when I talk to guys who were in combat and stuff, which obviously Tommy has more experience with that than I do. 
Um, I didn't see combat, but I got well, I've been talk, around talking guys. to guys yeah. who did. Yeah, I'm sure yeah, you know yeah. more than I do. But most of the time when I talk to them, it's not that they miss the actual like the fight, the killing of it, so to speak. It's that camaraderie. They the camaraderie is so fucking addictive. Even if you like, yeah. it's just like it's like being on a sports team and everything goes right. It's the camaraderie. Yeah. Yeah. Michael Francis says that he's former mafia guy. That's what he misses the most. It's so uh, male camaraderie is being addictive. I was talking to Fred Baker. Uh, he's a pretty big, he was former, he did like JSOC stuff, stuff like that. Like, you know, a quote unquote cool guy operator. And I was talking to him while we were on the stalker movie set. And he said, most of these guys just spent years where, you know, day to day, they're waiting to get shot at. They're waiting to blow up. And they've got a guy next to them who they know would cut an arm off for him. And then they get home and they can't trust their taxi driver. Like, that's what they miss. The, the friendship of and stuff. And I get that. I get that. You, wait, you're on the Stalker movie set? Yeah, the uh, the Stalker Shadow of the Zone. Yeah, were you in that movie? I, I was the co-writer. Me and Evan wrote it. Oh, because I, I was going to ask you about the Iron Lung thing. Like, and what you thought oh, about the, that. Yeah, yeah. The, the, uh, the movie, oh, I forget his name. David... It's like a European name, Schwarzenegger. He's Schwar- the guy who made dust. Schwarzenegger. Yeah, yeah, but they're doing a movie with like Markiplier and like Jack yep. Yeah, they're they're all going to be in it. I'm very excited for that. My friend Airdorf, the guy who made Faith, he went out to that set and like talked to them and everything. He said everyone there was super kind, nice. I'm excited for the film, but uh, yeah, the Stalker film I co-wrote with Evan Royalty, uh, and I may or may not pop up in it. We'll see. Uh, but it's mainly we get we got like actual actors and stuff like that like trained people and we fred baker was there as our like weapons consultant because there's a lot of scenes of guys like clearing rooms in combat so he was like the consultant for the doctrine of it and all that um it was a really good time but yeah I, me and him got to spend a lot of time on set together a lot of really cool people on that set for those you don't know what iron lung is it's, it's a video game where you go into a submarine in an ocean of blood and you're like a prisoner that's the basis of it. If you, you want more of that, you got to look and play the game. Yeah, it's it's a very cool premise. Very cool horror. Is it? Horror. Yeah, it's it's a horror project, uh, and it's very right. well done. It it does a lot with so little, and I think that's why it caught on online. But I love seeing someone, you know, obviously someone who like started something on YouTube or indie games, like go as mm-hmm. far as a film. I think that's great. Yeah. So are you uh, are you going to move to film? So you, you, you've written a movie already? I'm sorry. I wasn't familiar with that. I oh, no, no. You're, you're well. good. It, it's my first foray into it. So d- no okay. no need to know about it. Um, I So Evan Royalty and Stephen Hancock are the guys who did the, uh, the SCP films on YouTube, uh, mm. Overlord and Dollhouse. They invited me. I got talking to them, became friends. I had mentioned I had aspect or prospects of wanting to be a writer one day. So I co-wrote the stalker script with Evan. Um, so yeah, my, my long-term plan, like I, I, I enjoy YouTube. I want to keep doing it, but really my heart's in the storytelling of it, the writing. Can I, like can I ask a question? Yeah, yeah, of course. A clarifying question. Like the stalker, we're talking about like the premise of like stalker, the game or just a completely different aspect. No, it's, it's based on the game. Yeah. It's, okay, it's a okay. fan film around stalker. It has no connection to the actual game. This is just a fan like indie project, right? Um, but it's just our, our take on it. It's a film that's set like 15 years after the events of the games and like the, the fallout of it or whatever. Um, it's just a fun, like fan project. It's the game. It's not like GSC called us and told us to make a movie or anything. Um, but yes, it's based on the games. Um, so yeah, I co-wrote that along with Evan and, uh, that went great. I, I loved being on a film set. That was so fun and I would love to do it again. So I've got, I've got some stuff in the works behind the scenes, hopefully some more film go. projects. So we'll see where it goes. Is everybody done? Cause I wanted to, I wanted to do like some rapid fire question. Did Bill Clinton kill those two kids in Arkansas? Yes. <laughs> yes. If yeah. not directly, I don't think he did directly. I think he yeah, knew so. about the local police taking care yeah. of the problem so to speak so yeah. you're pretty yeah. sure that those that it was a weird one with the kids there was a weird but that you know <laughs> yeah. they're on the list they're on that like that conspiracy yep. list that i'm not completely i actually I actually on. made a video about those two kids yeah i know you did that's yeah. why i'm bringing it up gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. um i like that's how i discovered you actually oh cool a couple cool. years ago yeah 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 so, um who's the zodiac killer uh i think arthur lee allen yeah probably are you sure it's not yeah. ted cruz the the big now he's, he's a close he's a close second. He's three years uh, older than me. The the real the real like nail in the coffin evidence, other than the fact the police suspected it was him from years, other than the fact he had a zodiac watch that had the symbol 
the the mm-hmm. circle with the cross in it. I'd never found that to be convincing the watch I, thing. I don't, I, go ahead. I don't think it is on its own either, but I do think it's convenient that someone who identified himself as Zodiac sends the watch logo to the police. Like, sure, the watch it's existed, it was around, but it's it's just another, like, circumstantial evidence for the pile. How do you, recognize, uh, how, how do you reconcile the, the DNA test? There was only even a partial match with the Lee Allen and... Uh... Uh, I, I, I think it's just from the time period that it happened in. Okay. DNA was much more loose from the hips. Sterile practices. Uh, it was, it was 2000s. It was late. It was late 2000s. It wasn't like, you know, the other day. Um, oh, oh I, I, I meant yeah. uh, my apologies. I thought you were talking yeah. about the old, the old DNA test. Uh, I would chalk uh, that up uh, again. I could be wrong, but I would chalk that up to like degradation of the DNA. Uh, the evidence had been moved, passed around, changed so much. I, I don't know. What okay. really does it for me? Is there any, is there any chance Lee Allen knew he was suspect? Played into it a little uh, I, at I, first. And I then would it kind say of yes. Fired on him. I would say yes yeah. because Lee Allen was a terrible person. He was fired from his job for touching kids at uh, at yeah. school. Oh. Like already a bad In person. Seventies he was. Yeah. But and that's actually when the murder. That's when so the murders. The murders they could verify stopped is when he started doing time. Yep. Yep. <laughs> that that that's yeah, another yeah, piece yeah. that ties into it. But the big one for me is. Uh, the Zodiac killer sent a schematic of a bomb he was building to blow up a school bus. Mm. And then whenever Lee Allen's place was searched, he had all of the ingredients and the same schematics to build a bomb. So well, like, some people just like to make pretty. bombs. You're so, <laughs> yeah, you're, you're right. <laughs> Maybe Lee Allen was just a good old fashioned bomb maker. Had nothing to do he's with that Zodiac he's guy. Yeah. He's definitely the best subject. Yeah, just of, course, to know. of course. Of yeah. course. But I, but I, think I, I gotta be honest with you. I was so convinced. I read that. I read the book. I was like, God, I don't think it was 11 or 12 when I read that, uh, the first um, Graysmith book. Yeah. And uh, I've actually moved a little, I'm a, I'm a little more open to him not being the suspect. I'm um, slightly now. open to the, uh, yeah. uh, what's his name? It's the, the Kane. Kane, yes. Yes, I'm slightly open to him a bit, but I, think I still think too, it's Lee Allen. Too nuts. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah I don't think that guy could have kept it together for sure. But no, I think yeah, Lee the, Allen. Yeah, the I don't like because he was really wacky. <laughs> yeah, he was really wacky. And then that new guy who you remember last year they said they found him or whatever. All yeah, the articles. Know, yeah, yeah, that that guy, that guy was also way ever. too wacky. Yeah, he yeah. yeah. The other one I hear was the uh the the um although I don't buy it, but um he definitely fits the description. Is uh the, the left wing newspaper guy. Um, oh yeah, I yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I know the one you're talking about. Yeah, because I could see him take keeping it together. You know what I mean? He, yeah, to, like, he could like, keep it together. Tan, yeah. I talked about this. Uh, we covered it on a podcast recently, and I talked about more there. But uh, on Ooh. the red thread, go check it out. Now, uh, <laughs> but hey, I'll plug your stuff. That's yeah, that's very we'll ki- that's very in. kind. Uh, but th- I talked about how I feel like the Zodiac killer loved the attention more than he did the actual killing of it, which is similar to what we were talking about earlier when Wings brought yeah, up sure. the whole thing regarding yeah. like, you know, why do they do it like attention stuff? I think this was an aspect of that then because he wasn't really good at killing people. He attempted to kill mm. like eight or nine and got five. Uh, and it was mm. very sloppy. The only reason he got away with it was oh, you believe you believe the Jones uh, the the Jones case where where the g- woman that jumped out the win- uh, the car. You believe that was him? Well, th- well, that's why I say I like eight or yeah. nine. I don't know. Uh, it could have yeah. been maybe, but I don't think it was him. I think he killed. Um, I only. I, I think he killed the. I, I only think he killed the suspect they're sure about, and then he just went because he couldn't do it anymore. It just he was I, too hot. I, I think and he then killed. He five got people. the dopamine yeah. from the media all the yep. way. I guess yep. the last letter was seventy eight, right? Yep. Or that yep. was a phony one or something. Yeah. So I think he, he got he I think get... he got the high out of it. And then he wrote to the police yeah. saying he killed like thirty seven people. I think he lied. Yeah, I don't buy five. that for a minute. Exactly. I, don't, I don't buy that. All right, I got here's a rapid fire question. Does All Bigfoot right. guard the stairs in the woods? Uh he depends on if it's a work day or not, I'll say. <laughs> yeah. If it's if it's PTO, that's my little conspiracy theory. We don't see Bigfoot because he keeps going back into the portal at the top of the stairs <laughs> and he comes now, back out. Now you're thinking. Now you're a true whatever I am YouTuber. There you are. <laughs> and the stairs mm. lead to liminal spaces, and yep, the liminal yep. spaces that has takes you to, aliens. The to the aliens. Exactly. There's aliens back there, and they take you to the astral plane of the DMT realm where the clockwork elves are. It's all connected, of course. Right, and that's where my Native American took my magic card! That's where it goes, and it it all comes back to the boogie documentary. (laughs) Everything comes back. It's like the Ouroboros. <laughs> oh, no, there is one thing. We, we we can't stop here. You almost got canceled recently. This is my I, I had I had a brush with it, so to speak. It came yeah. by me. Yeah. 
Uh, yeah. yeah, people. Well, people you want to tell everybody why you got canceled and or, yeah, or yeah, try, sure. attempted cancellation? Yeah, yeah, yeah sure, ahead. no problem. Uh, so, I uh, it came. I think it came as a result of the H bomber guy video because I mm-hmm. was the face of that internet historian video that got called out in it. So a bunch of people started okay. going through my stuff. Uh, a few years mm. back, I had like a meme page on Instagram where I made jokes about like the ATF shooting dogs and uh the the mm. cia killing people or whatever um I, yeah. I had a bunch of jokes like that uh it, it went by the name boogaloo boy because back when mm. i made that page that was just a funny term for like uh, a boogaloo boy yeah yeah, yeah, yeah like you, you remember you were in the military you i'm sure you now it's now it's in. yeah now it's now um, it's like, so racist became, like the far yeah right. now it became yeah. like an alt-right thing which actually the reason i deleted that page is because when it started uh, associating with that i was like okay i'm out I'm gone. Yeah. Uh, I can't go on with this accent and boogaloo yeah, voice. Yeah, I'm out I can't. Here. Yeah, I'm too close <laughs> to the sun. I got to go. Uh, yeah. Right. So <laughs> I deleted it uh, and then eventually started Windagoon. But then a bunch of people uh, who were mad at me over being in the Internet Historian video found that. Mm-hmm. Uh, so they started saying, you know, neo-Nazi. Uh, the one tweet I saw. Well, uh, let me put it into context. A bunch of people say mean stuff about me all the time. I never care, right? It's the internet. I just ignore it. Except that Wednesday, I woke up. I was about to get on a flight. I go to Twitter and I hit the search tab and it says trending Mm. in the US, Lakers game, Windigoon. (laughs) And when you went to Windigoon, I was was like top trending in the US. When you go to Windigoon, the first tweet said, I knew, what was it? It was something like, I knew that Windigoon was an incel, but I didn't know he was a straight up neo Nazi or something like that. <laughs> I don't think people know what the word incel means. You're married. Like, you can't be an I'm incel. A ma- if you're yeah. married. Like, he just got right? married. Yeah. <laughs> he just got married, though. Yeah. Hey, you call me an incel all the time. It doesn't seem to matter. I'm married to you. Have a I kid. Mean, I, you can't be an incel. I mean, yeah, the, I word, the word the word, is the same as saying, like, someone I don't like, right? That's that's what they mean. That's all it, it is. Right? Um, so but, I get really offended by it. So normally I would never say anything. But someone who's never heard of Windigoon before clicks the word Windigoon on Twitter and the first thing they see is neo-Nazi. So I'm like, okay, I'll say something. So I made a tweet like, we've all had our fun, but no. Uh, and that was really the end of it. Uh, I don't think yeah. anything came after but that. But I, I, I thought it kind of came, there was kind of a, wasn't there like sort of the the woke, I think a lot of it had to do with your religion though too. You are getting oh, married. Well, well, okay. So uh, they kind of, they p- pigeonholed you as this sort of ultra right, uh, wacko, um religious coup, yeah well which, once the doors yeah. were open of people being like i think he's a neo-nazi because he made memes saying he doesn't like the atf which i do i still do now to be clear just under a different name. i don't like the atf i don't yeah, like him either yeah. um yeah. So I, I think most people don't but you know once the doors were open on that people were like yeah and also he's a sunday school teacher also he's married and it just like it just went but i mean it, like the the only I, it wasn't a real i feel like i have stolen valor as far so as basically, 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 so basically, you, you think uh, women can't be men, men can be <laughs> women. That makes you <laughs> according according to Twitter, that would be the <laughs> the gist of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah according to them. Well, Turkey Tom made a really nice video, kind of defending you. That was very I kind thought. of him. Yeah, um, I texted him. Yeah, I think it. I think it shifted. I- Someone who I consider a friend has been getting some. Sh- recently on Twitter from freaks and I kind of think that I should be defending this person a little bit considering that I care about how they're seen in the public eye you know I do it, it's always nice when um because I've done this before if you jump in in the right way when your friend's cancellation then you like somebody like me I can absorb just about anything so I can jump in and then absorb it and everybody focuses on you and I, I know how to I know how to like wear them out a bit yeah yeah. You know, you know, it, it, it was so very, good. it was very kind of him. I texted him afterwards that and said I really appreciated it. Uh, it meant a lot. Yeah. yeah. It's cool. I told, good. I was ta- thinking about this earlier. One of the best parts of YouTube, like, obviously I'm not going to sound stupid. Like the money, the career is nice. Right. Um, but one of the most invaluable things that I've taken away is like, I've met a lot of people like Tom who have like been proven as good friends and good people and it's relationships like i live Given in the, time yeah I, I, I live in tennessee he yeah. lives in youtubers are garbage man you're just like a religious nut and you like yeah, yeah. i mean like, what have i what have i think yeah. what have i think i mean uh, my experience most youtubers will backstab you 
Yes, <laughs> he's right. You're right. You're right. I'm not uh, saying Tom will, but you'll get back sure. to him eventually. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and and, and, and I and I have in you know minor senses yeah. of people like saying stuff. I like all these stuff. people. Get the f- not out not, all, <laughs> not all not <laughs> all. You're right. You're right. Hold on. Let me let me fra- reframe it a bit. Some of the people. I have met who I mm. otherwise never would have met in real life. We live on opposite ends of the sure. country, right? I've proven to be great friends, and that's something that I really appreciate. So Tom's yeah, a great a guy. You got lucky there. Tom's yeah, a great Tom's guy. Guy. Yeah. I've not, Tom used yeah. to call into my show when he was a teenager. Now he's a big shop. <laughs> he came yeah. he came down to my wedding uh and he was sick and he just kept drinking pool water so that that's good for that's, him that's very tom moment. No, I, i'm not even surprised by that story I'm in my so case. so basically just to summarize the reason you got canceled is because the internet was surprised that the guy who makes videos about the most f-ed up topics on the planet has a slightly <laughs> edgy sense of humor is that pretty, what is that pretty, basically that, what yeah, years ago, that's about so, right yeah. yeah and years ago Can, yeah, yeah. yeah. idiots mm. I, it. <laughs> I mean that's what i mean like i feel like i got stolen valor of being canceled because yeah. everyone was like this is stupid right it's just the fact yeah. that for like a few hours that was the top of the search bar that it, it got so much hate but like the, the amount of people who came to support me was like 20 times people who said anything mean and it, it really yeah a lot. You, you send you send they you send the haters to hate those haters and then they kind of cancel each other yeah out, then, you know? and then they they do yeah. my bidding for me and that yeah <laughs> well yeah if you can send it yeah it's all about numbers and overlap at the end of the day so when you've got a group of haters and you can send haters their way to hate on them and they just like i don't know it's all done yeah yeah, yeah. i mean it, it lasted like if, 24 and, and that's hours that's too. if you're like wings and you care you know, if you don't care, then it solves a whole fucking problem altogether. Right, right. You know? Pretty much. You could just turn off your phone and. Oh, I was sitting there thinking, like, that shit comes back when your friend season seven. <laughs> like, it's gone now. Because, like, in my, at the peak of my YouTube career, nobody gave a f- about any of the thing that they care about now about me. Well, I mean, that, that happens a lot. People will use old stuff. You know, it, at the end of the day, like, I, I hope, again, easier said than done. I've only been on the platform three years. I hope that then I will have the oh, same rookie. level of not oh. caring about it that I do now. It's something that gets you eventually. You just, like, don't turn into these two. Yeah, just basically <laughs> uh, uh, study everything me and Winks yeah, has don't done. Don't turn into me. Uh, yeah. and you don't will do don't turn into me. A happily married man that owns his house. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> hey, well look, well, look, if that ever does happen to me, not, not saying Wings specifically, but if that ever does happen, I hope y'all are looking for a fourth host. So. <laughs> awesome, yeah. Be glad to have you. I hope we still got the show going at that long. Yeah, yeah. 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 When, when you're on That'd episode be, 485, yeah, That'd I'll be, be awesome. right there with you. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, honestly, you could be co-host next week if you just tweet some up shit tonight. Let's just get it over. Yeah, no. That's go. a good point. Go. Yeah, hold on. Let me cook Speed something rubbish. up real quick. Let's go. Hey, hey, Wendigoon. <laughs> don't have any problems? Want some? Join our live cast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Do Sounds the live show. We'll find a problem yeah. for you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everybody. Thanks for being a part of the Lulcal Live. We really appreciate it. Make sure you join our live cast on Tuesday and then, I don't know, sometime around Sunday you'll get this. So thank you, everyone. Take care. Thank you all very much. Thank you all for having me. It means the world.